Well, good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, May 12th, and uh, thank you for tuning into our morning check-in. Would you do me a favor? Uh, many of you do this every time, but especially if you've never done it, would you just put a comment in the comment section? Let us know where you're watching from. Uh, I, I don't respond to all those comments, but I do read them, and it is very encouraging to see all the different places that are watching these morning check-ins. Well, right now, we're going through the life of Elijah. And when we reach the end of chapter 18, we see, I think, my favorite part of this story because it deals with Elijah's example in prayer. So we're going to slow down a little bit and take our time and see what we can learn. Now, before we get to 1 Kings, I want to jump ahead to the book of James because Elijah's mentioned there, and it's very interesting. Let me read it. James 5, verse 16. Therefore, confess your sins one to another and pray for one another so you may be healed. And then it gives a principle. Here it is. The effective prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much. There's the principle. Do you believe that? The effective prayer of a righteous man, a man that's right with God, can accomplish much. Um, I've heard it said this way. Nothing of eternal importance happens apart from prayer. Now, it says here, the effective prayer. That word effective is a Greek word where we get our English word energy. You could translate it this way. The energetic prayer of a righteous man accomplishes much. Now, think about that. Imagine describing prayer with the adjective energetic. Because when I think of the normal Christian's prayer life today, if I had to sum it up in one word, I doubt energetic would be the word I would choose. But the energetic prayer of a righteous man accomplishes much. Now, right after he says that in James 5, 16, he gives an example. And basically he says of all the characters in the Old Testament, one example sticks out among them all as the greatest example of that truth, that an energetic prayer of a righteous man accomplishes much. It's not David. It's not Job. It's not Moses. It's not Abraham. It's not Isaac. It's not Jacob. It's not Daniel. It's Elijah. And he says this, Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. In other words, if he could have energetic prayer, so should we. And he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the earth for three years and six months. Then he prayed again, and the sky poured rain, and the earth produced its fruit. So in the book of James, we learn that the greatest example of energetic prayer in the Old Testament is the prophet Elijah. So now we go back to 1 Kings 18, and now we're going to see what made his prayer life energetic, and there's several characteristics we're going to see, because it was his energetic prayer life as a righteous man that accomplished much, and that prayer is going to be seen all throughout 1 Kings chapter 18, verses 41 through 46. So here's what I'd like you to do. Spend some time today, read that passage. 1 Kings 18, 41 to 46. Ask yourself this question. What made Elijah's life, prayer life, energetic? What made his prayer life energetic? And beginning tomorrow, we're going to start breaking down those characteristics one by one. Well, let's pray. So, Father, I pray that you would use Elijah's life to teach us how to have an energetic prayer life. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I hope you made a comment in the comment section. I hope you'll share this video on your social media pages. And I hope you'll join us tomorrow for another morning check-in.